Hello everyone, welcome back to an exclusive Mama Max cancellation video. So today, uh, my exes are, as always, accusing me of rape, pedophilia, animal abuse, domestic abuse, kidnapping, and whatever else they can attribute to me. Too long, didn't watch, none of it is true, and I'm going to prove that to you today. If you don't want to hear about this shit, then click off the video, cause, uh, regular upload tomorrow. So just a little introduction, this is nothing new. My exes have been cyber-stalking and harassing me for years, and they have finally banded together to make a video accusing me of pretty much anything they can get away with saying in an attempt to cancel me. Because apparently abusing me during our relationship wasn't enough. They still have to control my life, as abusers usually do, and darvo the fuck out of me so everyone can believe they're the good guys. This is something I'm sure every influencer goes through when they uh, have a pattern of dating abusive women or men. And this has happened to me specifically multiple times. I have addressed it multiple times, and they will not stop. I'm going to be addressing them one by one because they are all individual people with their own individual stories, with their own individual motives. I know they're trying to use each other's stories as proof that they are all true but I'm going to show you that none of them are. So we are going to go chronologically backwards and start with my most recent ex, Paulina, the one who sparked it all. Mental illness check. I really need to book a psychiatrist appointment, but I keep waking up past their business hours. So I've been doing this thing that I like to call self-medicating, but my boyfriend calls substance abuse. So if you want to know a little bit of history between Paulina and I, you can go watch Craig or Steve's video where I talk more about that. But to summarize, I broke up with her because she wanted to see my DMs with one of my team members. I said, yeah, sure, if you show me yours. I asked her because she had been saying sussy things to other men, and she refused. So I drove her to her house, and I broke up with her. A few months later, we talked things out. She asked if we could get back together, and I declined, but we remained friends. A week before she canceled me, I paid her $200 to watch the dogs while I flew out to go visit my dad. Everything was fine. Until I got back, she would not stop texting me about shit I did not want to talk about with her. She continued to do this for the next few days, so I blocked her. A week later, she asked my sister if I was seeing someone else, and my sister told her that I was. And then all of a sudden, I become an abuser on her Instagram story. So did Paulina make the abuse story immediately after you told her I was dating? Yes. How soon was that? It was the next minute. She starts with worrying about me knowing her location, even though she literally went public with this while I still knew her location. And obviously nothing happened to her. So it's clear to me that she's just saying this to make me look like a crazy person. And then she claims I've given up her location before. That is not true. She has given up her own location and doxxed herself publicly multiple times. And there is proof of this on Kiwi Farms dating back years ago. Here's an example of me telling her what she needed to do to protect herself weeks before she got doxxed. She ignored my advice and she got doxxed. And then she blamed me and my team for it and told me to tell them to stop looking into her, which I did under duress. Here she says I would not hold her hand or hug her because it was getting in the way of my videos. None of this is true. I was very close and loving with her. She even talked about me very warmly online before I broke up with her. She continues to blame one of my team members of stalking when all they were doing was informing me of what Paulina was posting online that needed to be deleted because it would have been doxing us. Here she tries to justify her horrible behavior to me by downplaying it as emotions and boundaries. Receipts show you were the one who would not respect my boundaries, but damn, go off, sis. Here she quotes what I am to assume is some voice in her head, because no one I know has ever said such a thing to her. She then refers to my friends as a group of yes men that I surgically manufactured, probably because it will make it harder for them to defend me and talk about her horrible behavior without them looking like assholes. But damn, go off, sis. Here she tries to make it look like her therapist and psychiatrist also think I'm a piece of shit, even though I never met either of them. 
because Paulina would go into a private room alone and ask me to not disturb her during her e appointments, even though I was more than happy to drive her and go in with her to any of her other appointments. But damn, go off, sis. The woman's shelter situation I talk more about in Craig's video. If you want to know more about it, basically just her being ungrateful that me and my family were the only people taking care of her. In this story, she tries to appeal to corpse fans, but we have proof that she was in a Discord server with her friend Shit Talking Corpse before my video went up in a channel called Corpse Will Die Soon. And in fact, she was the one who made me talk about Corpse in my video. That's not to say I like Corpse, I think he's an asshole, but there you go. In this story, she plays up the act, so hopefully people will think she's standing up for a cause, I guess to give her story more credibility. In this story, she says it's unreasonable for an adult woman to make a police report because of time constraints, but somehow they have the time to post on their social media non-stop about it. Also, she was 22 when we met, so I guess she's just referring to another one of my exes in this, maybe? She also says people will always believe the man, which is statistically inaccurate, but damn, go off, sis. Uh, and then she starts insulting anyone who believes in my side of the story, despite the evidence I am giving. So according to Paulina, if you believe that I am innocent of these allegations, then you are either an incel, a fuckwit, or an abusive asshole. Here she self-reports and admits that I never, at least physically, abused her. Here, she keeps blaming me and my team for harassing her. These are people on Kiwi Farms and Lolcow impersonating us, and obviously, she's either not smart enough to see that, or is intentionally throwing it back at me and my team to continue to make us the bad guys in the situation. We do not want to interact with Paulina in any way, shape, or form. This is the same person that messaged Olivia for my last name, who then posted those messages on Kiwi Farms. He's the same guy that hacked the Yandere Dev Simulator creator. Uh, when she's not blaming everything and everyone else for her own problems, she spends her time fishing for attention and saying she wants to kill herself. Here's Paulina telling me not to tell anyone specifically female fans, about my abusive exes. Here's Paulina's blood on her plane ticket to me after not seeing me for a while and telling me not to call the police. Here's Paulina threatening suicide. Here's Paulina threatening suicide. Here's Paulina threatening suicide. Here's Paulina threatening suicide. As you can see, I have been nothing but kind and sweet to her. This is how I was our entire relationship, both online and in person. If it's any wonder why I broke up with this woman, now you know. You may have also noticed a person named Volpazera, who is spearheading a lot of tweets about me. I have never met this person. They are a friend of Paulina's. And Paulina has continued and 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 continued to harass me my friends, my team, and my family. And any time we try to defend ourselves, she says that we are the ones harassing her. So, as you can see, I was not the abuser in our relationship. She was. Hi guys, my name is Ali Wang, and unfortunately, I am one of Max's exes. You're pretty chipper for a rape victim about to talk about the rapist. I'm going to go ahead and skip most of what she says because none of it is important. If you want to watch it yourself, feel free, but it's a waste of time. She accuses me of being a rapist, an abuser, a stalker, and a groomer. Being that I am none of those things, I found it very hurtful and was curious why she was saying that about me. So I decided to reach out to her and ask her why. I broke up with you literally because you were boring, <laughs> to say the least. We never hung out. We never did anything. Mm. We never saw each other. Even though we lived together, we never did anything. I was bored as shit. Why all the, like, why all the weird accusations, though? Like the... Because I'm so tired of seeing these fucking 13-year-olds making fan edits. My ex-boyfriend, who made me go fucking crazy because he was fucking crazy. So you're being spiteful. 
Um, I'm being mad. <laughs> what, if I told, what if I told the internet you tried to kill me? That I tried to kill you? Mm-hmm. Uh, did I try to kill you? No. No, this is just a short clip taken from a 30-minute phone call before she joined the group chat with all of my other exes. I have added the full call in the description, censoring only personal information. Here is evidence of her making me older than I am. Uh, if I was 26 when we started dating, I would be older than my older brother. Here are some deleted tweets from her when she previously tried to cancel me a year ago, and someone saying the age gap she gave isn't a big deal. Here's evidence of her extorting me for money. I gave it to her only because I care about her dog. I told her that I do not want her to take down her TikToks if she did not want to, where she was accusing me of abuse. So she took the money and then immediately accused me of giving her hush money. And then she tried to say I watched lully porn, even though I literally had a channel dedicated to making fun of hentai, where she even appeared in an episode, but damn, go off, sis. Uh, and then she said I owned an anime body pillow. I have no idea how this relates to rape or abuse, but damn, go off, sis. Even so, I have never owned an anime body pillow. So, uh, yeah. So, out of all of my exes, Sarah is the worst. She has not yet come out publicly, and I think I know why, but she has talked about it to a lot of different people uh, she is in the group chat with all of my other exes and they do plan on releasing her statement at some point uh, but before she can even get to that I'm gonna tell you what she did to me Sarah repeatedly raped me and physically abused me throughout our entire relationship this is not something I would say about any of my other exes as much as I hate them and as much as I would love to accuse them of that, they did not. Sarah did. Now, how exactly did she rape me? You might be wondering. I am both physically bigger and stronger than she is. Well, she would get in bed and start molesting me while I was trying to sleep because most days I had to work early. It didn't matter how much I tried turning away or said no, she would continue. And when I would try to physically throw her off of me, she would scream at me and degrade me, calling me shrimp dick and not a real man if I didn't let her do it. And when I would realize I have no chance of escaping the situation and that it would be easier to just let her do what she wanted to do to me, I would give up and she would continue until I was hard enough to sit on. That is how she raped me. When I confronted her about it, she then flipped it and accused me of rape just because we previously had sex while she was tipsy that she initiated. Uh, so when she does go public, she will tell you that she was drunk and I raped her. I do not have proof that she raped me besides this picture of my arm that I took one of the mornings after she did. Uh, which I know does not prove anything. I also do not have proof that I did not rape her, because how the fuck do you prove that? Although, I do have this picture of the last thing she ever said to me. This is her handwriting, and this is her message. Is this what you say to someone who raped you? And I suddenly became a rapist only after I released a video about her. Strange. People wondered why I was so harsh in this video. And yes, it is because she raped me. I do not explicitly say she raped me or give out her name or give out her face in the video because I do not want her being harassed. I only allude to being raped and talk more about the feelings of being used more than anything. Uh, but damn, go off, sis. She's accused me and my family of neglecting our dog. Here's a video of me after I gave him a bath. And she is using that against me because he died of cancer. You're so cute, Anyway, she would often leave me with her dog alone to take care of her. 
Her dog name was Maggie, uh, and I took care of her lovingly. But I guess if I'm an animal abuser on top of a rapist and a groomer, that only helps their narrative, I guess. She's accused me of posting a photo of her without her consent on my video, which is this. Okay. Meanwhile, she has leaked nudes and posted pictures of me without my knowledge or consent, even after I told her to delete all pictures of me, which she lied about. She then tries to say she didn't cheat on me, she was just getting dick appointments. Now, we were broken up when this happened, but just like Olivia, she was talking to the guy while we were still together and had sex with him only days after we broke up. Is that not cheating? Uh, here's me telling Sarah to kill herself, among other rude things I said to her that I do regret, which is why I deleted my video on her back before I decided to purge all of my old videos. But I do not forgive her for anything that she did to me. I'm sure she'll try to spin this as me manipulating you. Me telling my side is manipulating you, by the way. But that's what happened to me. Next. Ah, uh, yes, Lucy. My first girlfriend. The one who took my virginity. Uh, the one who was my first kiss. Um. Uh. And the one who has, for f the last four years, accused me of grooming her and stalking her and uh, more recently rape, uh, which she didn't say before, but I guess that's a thing now. Max referred to me as Lulu. Um, I was, my handle on Twitter used to be like Detective Twigs or just Twigs or king twigs i don't know yet like you know i should done of them anyway um i dated mama max when i was a minor at 17. that's not what you told me but damn go off sis um from 2016 to 2018 my birthday is the 24th of october 1998 uh but we have some screenshots of people on Twitter, like referring to us as a couple. This screenshot is real. We started dating around August of 2016, according to her driver's license that puts her two months from being 18 when we started dating, which might be why she told me she was 18 before we got together. Funny how my exes have a pattern of accusing me of things they did to me. I don't remember being pissed off when I found out, uh, so if me not being pissed off that I that I was dating a 17 year old instead of an 18 year old makes me a groomer fuck it I'm a fucking groomer everyone's a goddamn groomer at that point uh oh but wait a second no I'm not cuz the age of consent in both Texas and Tasmania is still 17 and moreover she considered herself a consenting adult I find this all very hilarious since she was allegedly dating a 17 year old boy from England named Harry when she was 20 uh, while I was dating Olivia. Olivia will remember that. Maybe she'll, uh, maybe she'll confess to that. Hey Olivia, if you confess to that, I won't sue you for extorting me and uh, defamation. So we met online, obviously, on Twitter, I think it was. We met on July 7th of 2016 on one of my live streams where she was flirting with me in the live chat. We had mutual friends that said nice things about me to her and she thought my chin was cute. Uh, this was before I face revealed. Uh, shortly after, we started talking over Skype. I think it's in July of 2016 where he says he wants to cream pie me, which, you know, is sexual activity uh, as a minor. I have no idea what non-anon means. Is this even me? I'll just say it is because if I dare accuse them of faking just one screenshot, they're going to say everything I have on them is fake. Actually, you know what? They're probably going to do that anyway. So fuck it. The shit's fake as fuck. Also, there's no date on this, so it doesn't prove anything. Uh, although I'm not going to deny that we were sexual online. We were very publicly and there's proof of that on the internet. I think if I or anyone else thought Lucy was a minor, why the fuck would we do this? And why would we do this so publicly? And again, legally, she was not a minor. Um, at the time, he told me he was 18. This is true. I have always publicly went by the birth date given to me by FamousBirthdays.com. 
to protect my identity. Anyway, before we started dating, I face revealed and told her I was 20. She was understanding and still chose to date me for the next two years. So, uh, that he was born 1990. Never mind the fact they just fucking dox me to about t uh, 20 to 30,000 people. Uh, you might be wondering, how did they get this picture? Because I'm so trusting and open with my partners about my personal information, including my age, that I always send them a picture of me holding up my government ID to prove it, and I asked the same of them ever since Lucy. Now this is the picture I sent to Paulina, but I did the same for Lucy before she deleted her old Skype account where I'd sent it to her. Um, he told me he was 18, and then it wasn't until after I turned 18 he told me he was lying about his age and that he was actually 20. Lucy, let's just pretend you're telling the truth, right? Why would you continue dating someone for two years after you found out that they were lying to you about their age in a supposed attempt to groom you? Uh, if he was born the same year as me, it doesn't really matter. You know, he's um, just turned 18 and I'm turning 18. So it was fine. But uh, yeah, he was actually lying about his age. So you even admit that you were just turning 18 when we started dating and that it didn't matter if we were the same age. But because I am actually two years older than you, you believe I am grooming you. Not while I was dating you. No, no, no. That's fine. But after we broke up and I made a video where I talked about you. Ah, now I'm a groomer. Okay. Uh, he was talking about flying me over to Texas before I was 18 as well. Um, like As a minor, he was talking about flying me internationally to see him or maybe we both agreed that we would not be able to fly you until i had enough money to pay for a two thousand dollar visa and plane ticket because i had an unmonetized youtube channel with less subscribers than yours at the time and i did not have a job which was the main contention between me and my father during this part of my life just tell the truth lucy you wanted to come to me because you wanted to see me and i could not pay for it he obviously was only planning to do that after I became an adult. More like an entire year after when I could finally afford it. And I just wanted to note as well, there would have been, I don't have any proof of it, obviously, and I, even if I did, I couldn't show it, but there would have been um, child pornography in, this, in, in, in that case. Um, what is this? Are you admitting, as a legal adult, that you are guilty of distributing child pornography? That was it. I was a kid. She was just a kid. She was just a little kid. Leave her alone. She was just a toddler. No big deal. Just an embryo sending news. She doesn't know any better. That's 2016 when it began. I went to Texas in 2017. So I was a legal adult. I think at this time I was actually 19. This was the first night. It was just the two of us on our own. Uh, we stayed there actually the night before going to Six Flags itself where that is where he sexually assaulted me. I don't have uh, a police report to back that one up. I don't have any physical evidence either. It was, like I said, 2017. I'm not going to go into the details of how he sexually assaulted me or anything. That's okay because I will. If I sexually assaulted you before we went to Six Flags, you look pretty fucking happy for a rape victim standing next to her rapist. So I didn't do anything about it. I just waited until my flight to go home. And then when I was safe back in Australia, I ended things with him. You are a fucking liar. We stayed together for four more months until the end of April when I broke up with you. Anyway, I've had enough listening to her lie her ass off. I just want to end this section. So here's evidence of her lying about my age repeatedly to make me seem older than I am. Here's all the deleted tweets she made of me because people caught her lying about my age multiple times. And here she is finally correcting herself to hopefully regain some credibility. Here's Lucy refusing to talk about anything before the video so they can control the narrative. Here's evidence of her blocking actual CSA survivors who are asking her genuine questions out of concern for her and then here's her saying she wishes the block button would kill people go check out the videos by steve and spider centaur if you want to know more about that oh yeah and here's olivia talking about lucy harassing me back when we were still together anyway i'm done with her fucking shit Haley is not one of my exes Haley has never abused me Haley is a young woman that I fell for in high school and that I obsessed over 
in uh, while uh, and during my time in the military. Um, this is when I was 18. I made decisions that I obviously regret. But uh, with that said, Haley is painting a very different picture of our relationship together uh, during these times to make me look more like a creep, obviously. That is always the, the uh, name of the game with them, I guess. And I'm going to go through it with you step by step to show you where I believe she's being disingenuous. This is not me invalidating anything she went through, but I'm I'm just going to give my side of things. Okay. I want to start off by saying that I never thought I'd publicly tell this part of my life story. I hoped that this chapter of my book would end and I could continue my life without thinking about it. And you could have. I have not seen you since I left for the military. I have not contacted you ever since you called the cops on me. And I have not contacted your boyfriend ever since I apologized to him. You are the ones who showed up out of nowhere to try to ruin my life with my abusers. Even after I tried negotiating with you and your boyfriend to handle everything privately and legally, and you refused. I offered the opportunity to Anthony on the 30th of April to discuss and deal with these allegations privately and or legally. After inquiring about logistics on how this would be done, he then proceeded to give this heartfelt emotional story about the situation and then went on to decline the opportunity by saying, and I quote, so I don't need to talk to him to discuss what we experienced. And then a few days later, after offering another opportunity to discuss this privately and legally, he completely left me on red and then blocked me on his private account for some reason. I met Max in 2012, 2013 while in high school. I confided in him a lot of the mental illness problems that I had, and he reciprocated this and we did our best to hype each other up about the future. We would send each other songs and videos that made us laugh or smile. We were pretty much best friends at this point, but I was concerned he may have had feelings for me that I didn't reciprocate. True. You did not reciprocate them when your boyfriend was being nice to you. But when he wasn't being so nice to you, you would come to me for love and attention because that's all I gave you. We would talk on Skype almost every single night. You would invite me to come over to stargaze and talk in front of your grandma's house. We would go to the mall together and I would buy you things. We slept in the same bed together multiple times. We would cuddle. We would tickle each other. I would give you foot massages. We kissed each other on the cheek on rare occasions. And there was even one time you let me draw on your body with markers. But that's just my side. Max told me he wanted to be a firefighter. He also said that firefighter was a code word for something else. Um, I asked him several times over the next you know, few months what it meant, but he would just laugh at me and change the subject. Correction. I said I wanted to be a fireman, not firefighter. It was a code word for my future rap name because I wanted to be a rapper who would spit flames. Very epic, I know. She knew I wanted to be a rapper. I did not laugh at her or change the subject, although I did usually tell her, I'll show you one day, because I was alluding to a gift I wanted to give to her, which we will get to in just a second. I told him about my little sister's birthday party, which was happening at the end of June, and he just showed up. Um, I didn't invite him. Wait, what? Um, I didn't invite him. Are you saying did or didn't? Um, I didn't invite him. Okay, is this a Freudian slip? Because it sounds like you're saying you did invite me, which, yes, you did. You told me about it because you wanted me to get your sister a DVD copy of Frozen or a plushie of Olaf or something like that, uh, which I did, and I wrapped it in newspaper and band-aids. I know you remember that because it made your grandma laugh. But I did tell him that it was happening, and he just kind of showed up. I didn't think anything of it, but was a bit weirded out that he knew where my dad's house was. But we were in a smaller town, so I kind of figured he just kind of knew. I, I don't know. I, I knew where he lived because you told me. I do not know how to find people. I am not a hacker. That is why I have a team to help me find people. They literally make fun of me because how little I know of OSINT. Talk about my OSINT skills that I have. That I have. <laughs> You have literally none. <laughs> none, none whatsoever. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Max. Really, honestly, I really apologize. I don't think... 
I don't think Max was smart enough to manipulate people. (laughs) 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 I did not have a team in high school, and I did not have the skills or resources to social engineer before the military. You told me to get your little sister a present, and you gave me the address. He didn't speak the entire time he was there, but was standing close to me throughout the entire day. Half true. Yes, I was close to her because she was my friend and the only person there I was close with. But I was social the entire time. I even played DDR with her little sisters. One morning when I was working at the movie theater, uh, Max showed up unannounced in his old uniform. He hadn't worked there for over a year, but walked into the building before you know the theater opened. It was not a year. It was about a week or two after I quit. I did not know I needed to announce to you when I'm showing up to the theater I used to work at, but if you must know, the specific reason why I was wearing my uniform was because I was turning in my badge and picking up my last check, and I thought it would be funny to walk in and act as if I still worked there. I had tons of friends who worked there, not just you. Here I am with my boys. And it seemed to make people laugh. So please stop using random stories as evidence that I am somehow stalking you. I texted him a photo of my driver's license and he was happy for me and suggested I should take him for a drive sometime. Or maybe you just invited me, but you really want to make it look like I was pushing myself on you here, huh? We talked about how summer was coming to an end and how I'd be going off to college in 10 days. Max said he was planning on working and becoming a firefighter. So again, I asked him what that meant and he was just laughing at me. Then he pulled out a tiny little notebook. It was like this big. It's like a little composition, pocket-sized composition book. Most of the notes were similar to diary entries, you know, like what happened that day, you know, things like that. He talked about how I lit up his day, how he looked forward to seeing me and all of those things. He then brought up Dustin, who was, you know, again, my boyfriend, and how he didn't deserve to have me. He had written out a whole plan on how he would get him out of the picture. I don't fully remember the exact details and don't want to speculate how he would have done it from memory, but I remember it being thorough and violent and it freaked me out so much that I just like threw the book down. Wow. If that were true, that would have been really good evidence to keep. No, I don't know if you're purposefully lying or just misremembering this. So I made a promise to her that I would kill the man who she claimed had been abusing her during our friendship. I will not go into detail to respect her privacy. But the notebook was a gift. It was filled with raps I made about us two torturing and killing him. She said I was a psycho, but she liked that about me. And this is me performing one of the songs in that notebook a few years later. Here to fix it, solving all the issues by dissolving you. I never released the song out of fear she was going to call the cops on me, which is something she would do. Uh, And I gave up on my rap dreams. I called my friend at the time and told her everything. We both agreed that we, would, we wouldn't be reaching out to Max anymore and that since I'm going away to college, he wouldn't be a problem anymore. Um, this is most likely true because I do remember about a three-week period she did not reach out to me and I did not bother her. When she finally got back to me, she came over and we cuddled in bed. I got my laptop and showed her a weird YouTube video I made expressing my feelings and anger and sadness in this relationship. She then punched me on the shoulder repeatedly. Um, It did not hurt, but it happened. We then talked it out and things were fine after that. I was still unsure if I should keep trying to pursue her, but I would continue to come at her invitations. One night he showed up to my dorm room. Um, I hadn't told him which dorm I was staying in, so it was strange. He found out where I was. When I asked him how he knew where I was, he laughed and never told me. Please stop lying. You told me where you were. You literally had to come down and open the door for me because you need a dorm key to enter. You invited me to your dorm multiple times, and I even gave you a foot massage one of these times where you told me to stop tickling your feet. In September of that year, so September 2014, Dustin and I broke up, and against my better judgment, I ended up responding to one of Max's text messages. Gee, I wonder why. At the time, I think I did that because I knew he would be responsive and I just needed someone to talk to. At the time, you think you reached out to this problem person in your life that you and your friends apparently agreed to stop contacting, who is someone you are describing as a stalker and who has a violent and thorough plan to get rid of your then boyfriend and running away with you because you knew he would be responsive. That is the story you're going with. 
Well, first of all, that just makes you look like an asshole if you stop contacting this person and only reinitiated contact only when you needed him. But damn, go off, sis. Uh, he responded with feigned concern and was obviously turning the conversation towards me and him. Of course, because I can't actually be caring or have any positive traits. I always have to have some kind of antagonistic angle in this story. I told Anthony that Max had been acting weird since I'd moved away to college, and Anthony suggested I cut, him, I cut off all contact with him. I absolutely agree with him. If the person you've been describing was a real person, you should get the fuck away. I was stubborn and told Anthony that Max was a friend and I couldn't just cut someone off like that. Oh, you can't just cut someone off like that? But what about when- We both agreed that we, would, we wouldn't be reaching out to Max anymore. So let me get this straight. Y'all spent three months of work on this video together and y'all can't keep from contradicting each other's stories. He obviously, he will never go to the women that he's seeing. They always have to come to him. He will pay for that. That's fine because he is isolating you. He moved in with me and my parents. This is my parents' house. So he lived with me and my parents and my siblings. Let alone keep from contradicting your own stories. So what is it? Was I your best friend or was I some weirdo creep that you tolerated? I will not deny that I was obsessed with you. Yes, I was. And I'm sorry about that. But there were times where you loved that about me and responded in kind. And there were times you hated that about me and you would scold me. So I guess it does make sense why your story is so flip floppy. In my mind, I felt I needed to find a nice way to tell him that his behavior wasn't okay. Um, and still at this point felt responsible for his feelings since we had been so close previously. So you felt responsible for my feelings for you because we were so close previously. But I thought you said you didn't reciprocate those feelings, so why would you feel responsible? I know why. Because you were very flirty and touchy with me before you went off to college. At the end of October, Max called me and said he was in town and that he wanted me to meet his older sister who lived 10 minutes from campus. Max told me that she was a psychology major like I was and that she would be able to give me advice on and options after school. No the fuck I did not. I told you she may not be a psychology major, but she was a law major, and you thought that was interesting enough to talk about. I felt a sense of loyalty to Max, having been friends over the previous year, and I hoped he would see how he was acting and what he had done was not okay. This is true. I remember we had long talks about my obsession for her. I told her I would not be able to subside my feelings if we kept seeing each other. She told me, do your best. This is around the time I enlisted in the army because I knew it was not going to work and I just wanted to die for a cause. I did not tell her until much later. Max picked me up from my dorm room and drove about 10 minutes away to a nearby Comfort Inn and Suites. I asked him why we were at the hotel and he said he had booked a room for us for the night. Yes, I did do this, but I called her beforehand and told her my sister would not be able to see us tonight and if it would be okay that I got a place for us to stay. She said it was fine as long as they didn't try to fuck her. I agreed. I was shocked, and honestly, I couldn't move or even really speak. I started to panic just... If you're going to read a script, at least put some emotion behind the words you're reading so you can make the story sound legitimate. I don't claim to know what you were thinking or feeling at that time, but you and I both know I was extremely anxious if you were ever feeling uncomfortable in any situation, and it's something that would constantly annoy you about me. I would ask too much if you were okay or if there's anything I can do for you, but at that time, what I saw was a person who consented to be there with me, casually following me into the hotel. I did not force you in. I did not grab you by the hand and drag you. You followed me. Once we got into the hotel room, there was only one bed, and that's that's whenever I started to cry. Um, I asked him if he'd be mad if I left, and Max was laughing and said that we were just here to hang out and to catch up on our lives. Again, I'm not trying to invalidate you, but that's not what I saw. What I saw was us cuddling and talking about college life, and that's when I told you I enlisted into the army. And then you cried. But what you are claiming is that I am a psychopath laughing at my best friend as she cries in fear of me. What the fuck? 
He was standing like in the doorway and wouldn't let me walk past him. Anytime I tried to get out the door, he would hold my shoulders or my waist and he would just stop me. Honestly, I can't remember all of what happened that night. Yes, that is very clear, but a good excuse to not give more details, so I will. Since I do remember what happened, you laid your head in my lap as I scratched your head trying to comfort you about me leaving into the army. You asked me if there's any way I can get out of it, and I told you that I'm going to be getting a top secret clearance, and I could list you as one of my references, where you and I made a plan that you could tell them that I'm mentally ill and shouldn't be in the military, which wasn't completely untrue. And it's something you did end up doing because my sergeant notified me of it. But the army didn't seem to fucking care, and I still got my top secret clearance. As I've done all I could to forget and move past this memory for years, but I do know that I was scared and that I was held against my will for hours. Um, I remember being on my period and asking if we could go to the store so I could get tampons, seeing this as a way to get out of the room. Um, but Max said no. Actually, I said yes, and we did. I specifically remember when we got back to the hotel, she went to the bathroom, and when she came out, she said, I love shoving tubes up my bloody vagina, and I thought it was the funniest thing I ever heard at the time. I remember telling him that I was talking to a new guy and that we had plans to watch a movie that night. She never told me she was talking to a new guy because if she had, I would have freaked the fuck out because that's exactly what I did whenever I found out she was dating Anthony while I was in the military, which is what caused me to do the bad thing that I regret doing, which we will get to. I eventually was crying so hard that I just fell asleep. And I sat there laughing the whole time. People crying in front of me is the most hilarious thing. Okay, but for real though, what I remember, at least, was falling asleep after we were play wrestling. Like where you try to hold the person down and they try to escape. When we end up falling asleep cuddling. I woke up to Max's hand in my shirt. He was like rubbing my back all the way down to where my shorts were and his fingers were inside of my shorts. I rolled over and asked him what he was doing. He just kind of smiled super creepy and said that he was watching me sleep so usually that kind of behavior always results in rape and since you were such a frozen submissive little victim i absolutely could have raped you in this narrative couldn't i but you would never accuse me of raping you or fingering you or even fondling you could it be that we were just cuddling and i was just rubbing your back but max why would she lie about something so serious and we're gonna get to that soon I looked at the clock and it was 9.42 and I told him I had a 10 a.m. chemistry class and that I had to leave. Max agreed to take me to campus for class, but he wouldn't, he didn't agree to let me leave for any other reason. Okay, let's do another hypothetical. Let's say you are telling nothing but the absolute truth. Why would this psychopath only release you for class and no other reason? Why did this very touchy person not rape or molest you? Why did you never take a chance to escape while this person was asleep? Why did you never call or text for help when you had your phone on you? Why did you agree to get in a car with this distrustful person in the first place when you have your own truck and could have met up with him instead? Makes you think. After this, I did not respond to any calls, texts, or emails for several weeks. Yes, you did. We had multiple hangouts after this happened, and the last time I saw you, October of 2014, the day before I shipped off to basic, you invited me to your dorm where I met you downstairs for just a few minutes to talk. You were kicking my legs with your feet. You told me that you were going to go through with that plan to get me kicked out of the army. You asked me to write to you, and I told you I would. And I did, and you never responded. Anyway, we hugged, and then I left. That is the last time I ever saw Haley. In December of 2014, I was closing at a restaurant that I was working at called Cowboy Chicken. And when I looked outside the window, I saw Max's car. In December of 2014, I was in the military. I did get a week to spend with my family during Christmas break, but I never saw you once during that time. And my entire family can confirm this alibi because I did not leave their sight because they were so worried about my mental health. I called Anthony and told him that Max was at my job. Anthony came and picked me up that night and told Max to leave us alone. Max was upset that I had started dating Anthony and accused Anthony of taking me away from him. 
None of this happened during December of 2014. This was one of our visits after the hotel, but before I was shipped off. She told me to come to her work and look at her newly dyed hair. When Anthony showed up, he did not ask me to leave. We met up and then drove back to the UNT dorms in separate cars. I had suspicions they might be together because she went in his car. I asked her about it and she said they were just friends. He said he was in the military and doing basic training in Arizona. No, I was doing basic training at Fort Sill, Oklahoma. Arizona was after. After this night, Max texted me repeatedly asking why I chose Anthony over him. I continued to ignore them, the messages. He started messaging me again in March of 2015 with really vague and ominous messages like, be safe, don't believe what they say. Anthony was also getting messages such as, keep her safe and you don't realize who you have, but we just ignored them and assumed Max was like on his shit again, right? This is all true. By March of 2015, I was doing very bad mentally. This was while I was in AIT in Fort Huachuca, Arizona. I want to shoot myself for not saving any of these messages because she is lying about not responding. She would often ask me to pinky promise that I was going to be okay and ask for a picture. Max texted Anthony early one morning. It was like, but like after two, before five, like between two and five with a link to a video and a message that said, thanks, Anthony. In the video, Max was cutting his wrists. The video was posted on Anthony's Facebook page and he was tagged. Several of my friends reached out to me to ask what was going on. This is true. This is what I did after I found out they were dating. This is something I've regretted for the past eight years of my life. It is why I publicly apologized to her and her boyfriend years later, and it is why I've publicly admitted to it in a video for my 100K Q&A. And then I met her, and I loved her. And then she started to ignore me. Then she started to fear me. Then she started to hate me. Then she dropped all contact with me and called the cops on me. Depression. Suicide. I think it's obvious why I took this down years ago. It was selfish and it was cruel. I am not afraid to own up to it or talk about it. And I've talked about it to many people ever since. It was a great talk. I shared on the video that I posted about me doing that thing with my arm. But since they have deliberately violated my privacy and leaked this very personal story of my life, I feel I don't have any other choice but to divulge. They claimed they called a wellness check so they can look like the good guys. Anthony called emergency services to do a wellness check. A wellness check never came, and it is certainly not the way Anthony portrayed it when he first texted me after he saw the video. This is the man who saved my life where he found me wrapping my belt around my neck at the stairwell where I was going to hang myself. My brothers in the army are the only reason why I am still alive, and I am forever grateful to them. Do not let Haley and Anthony lie to you. They did not care. They filed police reports which do appear to be real, although I couldn't tell you because I was never charged, I was never asked to appear in court, and I was never mailed any notice. I did receive one or two different phone calls from the police department of Denton on separate occasions to tell me to stop stalking Haley. Being that I was about a thousand miles away in Fort Huachuca, Arizona, uh, where I remained to be until the end of 2015, I don't see how that's possible. But damn, go off, sis. And again, I do not know how to find people. I'm done listening to her. More than an entire third of my life has passed since this happened. I do not have any evidence to support what I'm saying. It doesn't look like she did either, besides just random pictures of us, which, if anything, proves my side more than hers. Um... I don't have any of the pictures and videos we took together that were on my phone. I don't have any of the Skype calls or chat logs or text messages saved. Um, and you would think if I am the person she is describing, I would have kept all of that. Don't you think? Uh, but what I do have is a witness. I hope they don't come after me. I'm scared. <laughs> 
Why are you scared? Why are they gonna? What if they try to make me lose my job or something? Well, they have been known to harass people. <laughs> Do you think people will believe I'm your sister and be like, "Y'all are related. That's an actor." <laughs> I mean, there's going to be people who are going to say, they're going to say, because you're my sister, obviously you're going to defend me. But if you. I am a woman. <coughs> I defend women. I, I would know hope. for a fact he hasn't done these. And if, then I would beat him up and put him in jail myself. I would not be defending him. But since I know that they're lying because many things they say don't add up with what I've seen and heard and remember. I know they're lying because they have so much, so many lies and inconsistencies that will be disproven. And what makes you a reliable witness? I was there during, I've met all of these women. I was there when they interacted with Max and I, I built relationships with all of them until uh, they eventually broke up. <laughs> you met all of them? Day. In person, you even tried making friends with them, correct? I tried. I mean, yeah, I met all of them in person, and I was nice to all of them. Too nice. I shouldn't have been that nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what was your perception of my relationship with Haley? That y'all were very close. Y'all worked together at the movie theater. Y'all went to school together. She was always coming over. Y'all would go to your room with the door closed like for hours. I just remember she was always picking up and when I saw her at the movie theater, she was like, oh, I love your brother. <laughs> and I saw, I would walk by and I would be cuddling in her room and stuff, in your room. And you even bought her sister a plushie because I was like, you never bought me a plushie. <laughs> That's how I remember. <laughs> so she claims I came uninvited, and also that she never gave me the address for her dad's house. I just found it. Then how would you know that, though? Uh, she, I think she is. Is she, is she saying that you guys weren't friends at all? No, she she admits we we were friends, but she doesn't admit to. She doesn't the... admit that she led you on. Correct. I mean, she kind of cheated off on her boyfriend with you. How? I guess she doesn't want people to know that. How did she, would she... come over, y'all would be alone, cuddling and stuff. Uh, so what did you see and hear when I was with Haley that you witnessed? I would hear y'all laughing, talking. I said I saw you guys cuddling on your bed. <laughs> okay. But, uh, yeah. How often did we hang out, do you think? Like a lot. How, how like much is a lot? Times a week. Multiple, multiple times a week. Okay. Well, do you have any reason to believe that she is, she was just like placating me uh, because I wanted to be with her? Like she was just like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll come over, but like, let's keep our distance. I mean, she texted you a lot too. It's not like it was one-sided. My senior year, we were talking just about every single night on Skype. Oh, okay. That's why you were in your room that whole time. <laughs> yeah. You, you remember, because I would, I would keep the laptop in my room. Yeah, I was and in your closet. Yes. I, no, well, momentarily I gave it to her so she would play the I remember, and that was our aunt's laptop. And we we're like, why did you give her our aunt's laptop? I just let her borrow it so she, would, so she could play the Walking Dead game because I recommended it to her. Oh, okay. You did the most. Don't need to give her a whole laptop, but okay. <laughs> uh, she gave <laughs> she it back. Get her on computer. What do you think when Haley says I would show up to her house uninvited? I think she's lying. She definitely invited you all the time. You were all. She was always picking you up and stuff, and being like, "Oh, where's Max?" What do you think when Haley says I kidnapped her and trapped her in a hotel? And you, as an eighteen-year-old. Yeah. I think that's really funny because just look just just look at yourself at 18 is is he really kidnapping someone? <laughs> Can you Why? really kidnap someone? Why because I was so small? Yeah, and you're also not that person. Like people think from your videos that you're like a violent dude. <laughs> I think 
they see your character and they're like, he's so violent. He's living his violent fantasy. But no, Max has never um, fought anyone except for me. <laughs> okay. Um, so you you think I'm not the type of person to like hold someone down in a hotel room, make it's so them so ridiculous not that they would say that. Why that is, makes me angry. Why? You're just not that person. Anyone, any one of your friends from high school could vouch for you. Yeah, anyone who knows Max in high school, he was a nice guy to everyone. He was nice to everyone. Oh, you why? never would kidnap someone. Uh, then why <laughs> does... Let alone Haley, his friend, and she definitely was not kidnapped. And it's also interesting to me that she has all those old videos of you from high school. Like, Is that not that weird? Figure. Is that not weird to that keep? Is so weird. Why does she have all of those old videos of you in high school? She saved them in a folder. Videos of Max. That is so weird. Yeah, I, I don't even have pictures of her, and she is claiming I am stalking her. Uh, and we and did. They took, they took a picture of us at your graduation with our family, whited out my face and our mom's face, and put it on that video. That is so disturbing, not to mention what Anthony did. <coughs> yeah. Um... With do doxing my mom, my brother, and me. And my sister, my other brother, not Max. So you blame that on Haley and Anthony? Because who else would have our mom's information, know what school and town? It's so weird. And one. And they're putting and my other family in danger. They're not even hurting you. They're hurting us. <laughs> yeah. They're hurting us more than it hurts you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I blame Anthony for that. And Haley. Screw them. Are you going to talk about her fake Facebook account she made posing as you? Oh, shit. I actually need to mention that, huh? When did she make it? <coughs> so she made it. So as you to tell people to stop talking bad about Anthony because Anthony's ex was saying bad stuff about him that would get him in trouble. Yes, she was. Yes, she was impersonating me, and I, I did guess. Did you let those people know? No, because I didn't give a shit back then. Because I was in the. I was, this happened while I was in the military. Oh. Um, and I didn't give a shit about anything. I was like, yeah, just do whatever you want. I don't care. Um, yeah, you're like, I'm going to kill myself tomorrow. So. Yes. Haley, I've tried apologizing to you. And all you wanted was for me to leave you alone. And for the past eight years, I have left you alone. And you still do not leave me alone. You call the cops on me for no reason. You give credibility and support to my abusers. Uh, you dox me on Kiwi Farms, and then you dox me to over twenty to 30,000 people on this video. You've destroyed every inkling of privacy I have fought so hard to protect. And with the work I do, you have put me and my family in danger. I have always taken full accountability for what I did to you. I was fresh out of high school, straight into the military, depressed as fuck. And you're tearing down me because of who I was back then. Um, so this is all I really want to say. Okay, so as of right now, I have a friend that doesn't talk to me anymore. Her name is Haley. Haley Rasmussen. She doesn't talk to me anymore because she hates me because I'm I was a stupid idiot. But uh, anyways, uh, I just want to say to you, sorry. Now, please leave me alone. Yeah, anyone who knows Max in high school, he was a nice guy to everyone. He was nice to everyone. Oh, you why? never would kidnap someone. Uh, then why <laughs> does... Let alone Haley, his friend, and she definitely was not kidnapped. Um, then why does Anthony hate me? <laughs> Am I allowed to say why? Anthony Field, Haley's boyfriend, Magnetar on YouTube, the one who published this video on me.
I have known this girl since she was a child, and I believe what she says. She has multiple friends who confirm her story. He graduated high school, and he was an adult. He sent his genitals to a high schooler who was around 14 years old or 15 years old. We were like hanging out, and she was like, this guy sent me his penis. We're like kids, so we're just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and you can... I don't know if those were the exact words, but yeah. Okay. Um... But yeah, I didn't know that he did that. Uh, where was he working at the time? He was working for, he was like volunteering for like Obama. <laughs> he was interning at the White House. But I have not made a video on him, despite wanting to all these years, because I do not want to harass them, and I feel this is not enough evidence to build an entire case against him. So I have not and will not until we have more proof. We know that he has multiple victims spanning the past eight years, and if anyone wants to come forward, email me with the subject line, Anthony Field. I am not using this allegation to discredit Anthony or the rest of my exes. I hope the evidence and context I provided should be enough, but I do think everyone should know, and it explains why he is so passionate about tearing me down. It is why he put together all of these women in a group chat and spent three months to create a narrative in an attempt to silence me. It is why he uses manipulative language so that I can't defend myself without people immediately thinking I am lying. It is why he has been trying so hard to pester small commentary channels to cover the story. It is why he refused to handle everything privately and legally, even when I accepted his terms to have legal representation. And it is why he incessantly responds to every comment and tweet, making sure to call me a predator. He is the predator. I guess it's poetic that my abusers try to take me down with the help of a pedophile. So what have we learned today? Uh, I learned I can make a better and more honest video with more evidence by myself in less than a week than these five people can make in three months. I'm not trying to prove to you I was a good boyfriend. I was also always a spiteful little bitch after we would break up. I mean, because they would fucking sleep with someone they were talking to while we were still together. <laughs> but the fact that they are trying to profit off of subjects like rape and CSA is probably one of the most fucking disgusting things you can do as a human being. You guys are the reason why it's so goddamn difficult to believe actual victims. I have reached out to my non-abusive exes who wanted to speak up for me, but wouldn't because they are afraid of these women because they have been harassed by them before. Uh, and that seems to be their pattern. If you don't believe them, you're going to get harassed, especially to my last partner who had it the worst. I've tried contacting the police about this years ago. They didn't do anything. They didn't even take my reports. I've tried contacting a lawyer and they told me I have to prove damages and provide evidence that these women know they are lying which is impossible without a confession. Uh, so I guess I can sue Olivia. <laughs> I know once I publish this, they're going to continue. I know this because it is their pattern of behavior that has continued entire years after breaking up with them. Now, I could be like them and dox them and armchair diagnose them and insult anyone who believes them but I don't want to be like them. I do not want to be an abuser. I do not want to even ruin their lives. All I want is for them to leave me the fuck alone. I just want to escape from them. I have given them multiple opportunities to stop. And even when I did respond, I would do so only through small channels. So they would not receive the full force of my audience because I know you guys are very zealous which I appreciate thank you but let's save it for the pedophiles um, but they have not stopped and the only reason why I'm making this video is because they have not stopped Paulina Olivia Sarah Lucy 
Haley, and Anthony. Leave me the fuck alone.